What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. With the new Onslaught activity releasing soon, players will need to start putting together builds that demonstrate dominance in the battlefield, while also providing a lot of additional support to keep you and the rest of your team secure and alive so that you'll have success in the later stages where the waves of enemies will get much more aggressive. So to that end, we are revisiting an extremely powerful Solar Warlock build that will give you the power to crush your enemies while providing you and your team with an abundance of health recovery and bonus damage to survive and overcome the most brutal waves of Onslaught. This build features the Sunbracer's Exotic Gauntlets, an exotic you've probably heard about. This comes with the Helium Spiral's intrinsic trait. Whenever you defeat an enemy with a charged melee, you'll gain 5 seconds of supercharged grenades. During this 5 seconds, you'll have a 20,000% increase in grenade regeneration, allowing you to throw as many as 7 to 8 grenades in that 5 second period. The caveat to that is that you need to get a charged melee kill for that to happen, and in some situations that can be problematic. But with how Onslaught is designed, you'll have multiple groups of enemies pushing in from multiple vantage points, so you'll be able to isolate yourself just enough to where you won't have to compete for any kills, but still be close enough to your teammates to where you can easily support them as you focus on the different objectives. We've got several components to this build that will amplify our use of the Sunbracers, so let's get started by checking out our class tree. We're using Well of Radiance which doesn't have the flare that Daybreak does, but it's going to be much more beneficial when you're having swarms of exploding enemies, ogres, tormentors, and champions all coming at you and your team. As far as aspects go, we're using Heat Rises, and not because we intend on floating around in the sky. That's actually the last thing we want to do here. But when Heat Rises is active, whenever we defeat enemies while airborne, our melee energy will receive a massive bonus in its recharge rate. This will give us between 20% and 50% melee energy based on the opponent's difficulty level. Staying up in the air can quickly get you into trouble, so what I find to be a better way of keeping heat rises triggered is to just bunny hop while in combat. This keeps you closer to the ground, but still allows you to reap the benefits of increased melee regeneration. When we consume a grenade to activate Heat Rises, we'll send a burst of healing energy out that provides a two stack of cure to us and any ally that's within 9 meters. This will instantly provide 120 points of health. Heat Rises starts as a 15 second buff, but defeating enemies will extend this up to 30 seconds. Since we are using the Sun Bracers, we'll be using Solar Grenades, and with Touch of Flame, those Solar Grenades will last 2 seconds longer, and will trigger Magma Orbs that deal out bonus damage. I do think Healing Rifts provide a great advantage, but it's not always easy to place those where your teammates can get the benefits of them, which is why I like using Phoenix Dive. Phoenix Dive provides a 2 stack of cure, but when Heat Rises is also active, it will provide a 2 stack of restoration to go along with that cure. And when enemies are struck by Phoenix Dive, they'll take Scorch damage, allowing us to use this more offensively. I also like Phoenix Dive since it gives us a quick way to get back down to the ground if we are floating around tossing out grenades. Let's go ahead and talk about Fragments. We've got Ember of Torches, so whenever we strike enemies with our charged melee, we'll apply Radiance to us and teammates, giving any weapon a 20% increase in damage and giving them the ability to pierce barrier shields. If we add on Ember of Empyrean, whenever we defeat enemies with our solar weapons or abilities, we'll be able to extend the duration of Radiance and Restoration, adding anywhere between 2 and 8 seconds based on the enemy's difficulty level. We want to have our charged melee available as much as possible, so by using Ember of Searing, whenever we defeat Scorched enemies, we'll gain between 8 and 25% extra melee energy, stacking on top of what Heat Rises will provide us, and effectively giving us the ability to spam these grenades, since we'll be scorching every enemy we come in contact with. Since we will be throwing a ton of grenades, Ember of Resolve would be a great choice to give us another source of health recovery. 
Each enemy defeated by a grenade will provide one stack of cure, giving us 60 health points off of each enemy. The only other fragment that I would recommend using would be Ember of Benevolence, and this is because we will be in a team activity. This will give us a 400% boost to the regeneration rate of our grenade, melee, and class ability whenever we apply Radiance, Cure, or Restoration to an ally. These effects last 6 seconds, but will be triggered each time these effects are cast, which could definitely help us improve the uptime of all of our abilities. Now that we've talked about our class tree, let's redirect our focus over to our seasonal artifact, which isn't a requirement to use by any means, but to those who do have access to it, you'll find some very lucrative mods that are going to improve the performance of this build. Starting with Heart of the Flame, this will be immensely beneficial when in team activities. This grants Radiance to all teammates whenever we cast our super, and after we cast our Well of Radiance, we'll have increased caster damage, which will increase the damage of any grenade and charged melee that are used after popping our Well of Radiance. We've also got Flint Striker, which gives us a secondary means of triggering Radiance. Radiance will get applied whenever rapidly defeating enemies with a solar weapon or when getting consecutive precision hits with a solar weapon. We've also got Kindling Trigger, which is going to give our solar weapons the ability to scorch any unscorched target whenever we do have Radiance. Revitalizing Blast will weaken champions and bosses whenever we strike them with our solar abilities. This will provide a 15% debuff against that enemy, increasing how much damage that we and our teammates will be able to apply. From whence it came will be a great mod to use when going up against Scorn and taken enemies as it grants a 5% bonus to ability damage when facing those enemies. Wished in a Bean will generate extra orbs for us and teammates. Whenever we are close to having our super energy full, ability final blows will generate 3 orbs. We do plan on using a couple of different grenade launchers and rocket launchers with this build, so using Blast Radius will give us extra armor charges, while Argent Ordnance will use those charges to boost the damage of rockets. When it comes to our choice in weapon loadouts, we have a lot of solid options and a lot of exotics and legendary weapons that will synergize in different ways with the Sun Bracers. For example, the Monte Carlo is an amazing kinetic auto rifle that would vastly improve the uptime of our melee energy, helping us push out even more grenades. The Conditional Finality would give us another option to create ignitions and freeze targets, which would stun unstoppable champions and it would pair up nicely with the use of artifact mods like Torch, Dragon's Bite, and Hail the Storm. We've also got options like Osteostriga or The Thorn, which I think will be a really strong option when it comes to Onslaught, as other of these exotics would add poisoning effects on top of the Scorch and ignitions that we'll already be exposing our enemies to. And for that same reason, there's also the Outbreak Perfected, which would be an amazing option to apply bonus damage off of all of those nanites. And since Pulse Rifles can stun Overload Champions this season, you'd be able to have those champions covered with the Outbreak. When running any of those kinetic exotics, the use of a Solar Energy Weapon with Disruption Break will be a fantastic combination. Disruption Break grants a 50% increase to the damage of kinetic weapons after breaking an opponent's shield, and it's found on weapons like the Explosive Personality Grenade Launcher. I also like another grenade launcher with this build, the Wither Horde. It gives us another source of applying damage over extended periods of time, and since you can drop a few of these blights right onto the Onslaught ADU, this will give us a tremendous advantage against any pursuing enemy. The Sunshot is one of the more popular exotic options with the Sun Bracers, and it will continue to perform really well during Onslaught, but there's also quite a few legendary weapons that are going to be just as effective with this build, like the Zaoli's Bane, the Abyss Defiant, the Summoner, the Aramite, the Cartesian Coordinate, or a number of other solar weapons that provide perks like Incandescent or Heal Clip, along with Pugilist and other perks that regenerate melee energy. The Luna's Howl and the Mountaintop will both be returning during Into the Light, and both of these weapons 
will be fantastic options to go along with the Sun Bracers. When it comes to our choice in Heavy, the Apex Predator is one of my primary choices, especially when using Argent Ordnance. Otherwise, I really like using the Cry Mutiny after the recent buff to Grenade Launchers. But if we've kept our exotic option open, the Dragon's Breath will be a great option to clear out large groups of enemies in an instant during those more difficult waves of Onslaught. When it comes to our choice in armor, the main character stats that we're focusing on are Resilience and Strength. Resilience reduces the damage that we'll take, and Strength will reduce the base cooldown of our melee energy. Discipline isn't going to be as necessary with this build, since our grenade energy will get instantly restored off of our charged melee. When it comes to our armor, our goal is to amplify the uptime of our abilities and to create as many orbs as possible. This is why we're using a harmonic siphon mod on our helmet, a firepower mod on our gloves, and a reaper mod on our class item. To regenerate our super energy faster, we can use Ashes to Assets on our helmet also. And with the use of the Impact Induction mods, we'll be able to regenerate additional melee energy whenever we hit enemies with our grenades. We filled our chest armor up with resistance mods, but on our boots, we've got Recuperation to give us another source of health recovery, and Invigoration to give us 10% extra melee energy whenever collecting those orbs. We're making use of all these orbs and armor charges by using a weapon surge mod, which is going to give our solar weapons an extra 10% bonus in damage. But if we are using one of those kinetic exotic weapons, then I would recommend to use a kinetic weapon surge mod instead. Another option that we could use to make use of all of these orbs and armor charges would be to use melee kickstart, which would regenerate bonus melee energy. But I think that between all of our class tree options, and our other armor mods, we don't really have to worry anymore about melee energy. And since the ammo economy in Destiny can become pretty stingy, we have opted to use a special finisher mod on our class item, so that when we perform a finisher with at least three armor charges active, we'll gain special ammo. And with that, we've now covered the class tree options, the seasonal artifact, and all the weapons that come together to make this magnificent Solar Warlock build that's going to be perfect for those onslaught activities. And with that said, I wish you all the best of luck throughout this season and throughout Into the Light. Let me know your thoughts about Into the Light, the new onslaught activity, and this Solar Warlock build. So let me know down in the comments below. If you need help making a copy of today's build, you can easily do so by using the Destiny Item Manager link in the description below. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new Light Guardian, just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.